Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be showing you the basics of HitFilm for Express. So I've already done a video on this but I thought it was sort of a lame video and I'm going to redo it because I think I can do a better job at it now. So to create a new project, simple click on the new icon right up here. You can also open up any project you have existing or any recent projects you have. Alright guys, so once you've clicked the new, you're going to be going into your project tab. So, you've got your four tabs up here, and this is how you work in HitFilm. First, you set what your project's going to be, then you're going to spend 99% of your time in the edit, and then you're going to want to export your video, and we'll go through all of these together. So, you can choose a template, any of these templates. If you know your video is one of these templates, then just click on it. If you're not sure, then you can always change this later. I'm just going to set mine to 1080p Full HD at 25 frames per second. And then you're going to click Create. Alright guys, so once you've done that, you should be in your Edit tab. Now, what happens here is pretty much everything you ever do. So I'm going to go through what each of these windows does and how we can use them. First of these is the Timeline. This is pretty much where you'll be editing your video. Along the right, as you go left and right, then you've got yourself the time as the time progresses through the video. Um, you've also got yourself layers of videos, which we'll get to later. You've got your viewer here, which is uh, where you actually view the end result of your video, so what happens in the timeline. The trimmer here is how you preview your media and how you set how much of it you want to go straight, directly into your timeline. And You've also got your media, effects, controls, history, and text tab down the bottom here. You've also got your audio meters to make sure that your audio doesn't clip. So I've already got a bunch of things imported, but how do you import your media? So the easiest way is just to drag your media in. Just to show you what I mean, I've got this video clip here, and I'm just going to go into HitFilm and drag it directly into the media panel. The other way you can go is by pressing on the import button and then choosing the files through the window that pops up. Alright, so once you've got your clips, we can, we can preview them in the trimmer, play them back even, and we can also set in and out points for these. What I mean by that is you can just drag your video directly into the timeline, like so, but what if you don't want it to be that long? Maybe you only want a certain part of it, like from here to here. In that case, you can select your in point by pressing this button or pressing the I key on your keyboard and over somewhere else pressing the O key on your keyboard or this button. And then when you press either insert clip or overlay clip, then you can just put it straight into your timeline, but only this little bit of your video. So in your timeline here, you've got your scale and this is how you zoom into your clips in the timeline. And I'm just going to um, import all these rest of the clips into my timeline right here too. So I'm going to get that one, and this one, and this one, I'm going to make it sort of short. And because there's a little gap here, we can just drag it until it snaps like so, and we've got it perfectly aligned against each other. Alright guys, but you may have noticed I've also got my music here. So, as we can see, we've got a number of tracks here. So we've got video one and audio one. And by video, it just means the visuals. So what happens is, you've got your video and your audio right here, and that's what makes up a video, pretty much. And if you want to add more audio on that, you have to add another track. So to create a new track, you can just hover above or below the uh, existing tracks and it will create a new track for you. And now we can have our music playing back very nicely. How do we edit things in the timeline? Now we're going to go into all the tools that we can use in the timeline. So the first is this tool, which is the normal move tool, the selection tool. We can use this to move video around in our timeline and we can also use it to lengthen and shorten video in our timeline. To undo anything, you can just press this button, 
and you've also got your hand tool which enables you to just scroll through your timeline your slice tool which slices videos in half in case you want to move separate bits of them or something your slip tool which allows you to say if you haven't used the whole video yet to move the in and out points left or right in your video um, which is pretty cool you've also got your slide tool which enables you to slide your video um, in between the other videos. You've also got your ripple edit tool which I use a lot of the time because say I want to shorten this but I don't I don't want to move everything back again this works sort of like a magnetic timeline and uh, now it's all it's all back together again so this way we don't have to select it and move it back again. We've also got the roll edit tool um, which is handy because we can move the in and out points between two videos like so and we've got the rate stretch tool which enables us to make videos really fast or really long. Alright guys, so if you want to change the audio volume on your video, all you have to do is click on your audio, go into your controls and under your properties there should be your level. If it's not in a separate audio track but instead it's in um, one of these video tracks, clicking on the video will enable the clip properties which is completely different. You want to click on the green bit below to look at your level properties. What you can also do is in your transform you can scale videos up which effectively zooms into them, um, scale them down like so. You can also set their opacity, so how vivid they are, their rotation, their position and their anchor point. By changing the anchor point you're moving the video but they'll scale still around the center whereas you move their position then they would still scale around that center point over there. And you can also layer multiple videos on top of each other, like so. And maybe scale this one down a bit, just like so. Now we're going to go into the effects, because the effects is really where HitFilm shines. In our effects panel, we've got all sorts of different effects here. First off, we've got the audio. These are sort of gimmicky, and I wouldn't use them unless you really needed to. There are some really cool color correction tools here, some very advanced ones like curves, levels histogram, etc. But I would stay away from the auto ones because they sort of ruin your video and they can have some flickering side effects. Now you've also got some all sort of cool cool effects here. You've got some keying effects, so color difference key if you have a green screen or a blue screen, or luminance key if you want to get rid of black or white in your video. You've also got some light flares, um, which you can access here, which produce uh, lens flares realistic to normal life and you've got some really cool effects such as lightning and electricity um, which are sort of fun to mess around with. In your effects panel you've also got your transitions so you can add a fade transition on your audio or you've got a bunch of video transitions. So we're just going to add say a cross dissolve which is your normal dissolve onto our video here and we've got a nice transition between our videos. We can extend the length of this transition just by extending on the bars too. You've also got some really nice presets down here in the uh, effects panel, such as some really nice film looks, some 3D effects which are sort of gimmicky once again, and uh, a nice blue screen and green screen key effect. So now we're going to talk about composite shots. Composite shots are where HitFilm shines because it's where you do your visual effects. So to make a composite shot, all you have to do is right click on your video, press make composite shot, or click on your video, press this button, or in your media panel, you can right click and press make composite shot, or you can press new composite shot and create it not out of any video, but just blank. I'm just going to click on here and press make composite shot. You can name it whatever you want. So I'm just gonna call it that. And you just leave everything the same. So now we see we don't have the clip anymore, but we've got the composite shot in our editor. And then whenever we change something in our composite shot, for example, we may change scale it will change it in the editor too which is really gnarly the way that a composite shot differs to an editor is that in an editor you're sticking clips side by side up over time to create a nice video but in a composite shot you're sticking them one on top of each other to create really cool effects so for example um, we can drag another video for example this video right on top um, we can maybe scale it down and we can do all sorts of things. We've also got some effects in our 
effects panel which say layer only on them, such as lens blur, and these can only be applied to layers in a composite shot. In a composite shot, you can also have really cool plane layers, so just a blank plane. You can also have text grades, which uh, is how you apply a grade to all of the clips below it, and some other really cool ones such as points, light for 3D work, camera for 3D work, and text. So to add text, you just click new layer text. You can change your size of the text box to be whatever you want. I normally set it just to 1920 by 1080 or whatever the size of my video is. And to edit text now, we have to click on our text tool in the viewer here and we can type hello there. And we've got our text, although it's sort of hard to see at the moment. So the way we can edit our text is by going into our text tab over here and we can go and change the font to say uh, American typewriter, we can change the size to be say 200, hello there, this is going to spread apart the individual letters of the text so I don't want that. We can also change the color of the text by just selecting a color or we can use the eyedropper to select a color in our video, for example, this lovely green. We can also make it transparent. We can also choose what type of the font we want, so regular, bold, etc. We've also got some line spacing, so for example, if I just undo that and I so my name is Shiny Films, then we can, uh, if we select all of our text and we can change this, then it'll change the spacing between the lines. We've also got some outline, so we can select the color of the outline and using the same eyedropper and transparent for the stroke slash outline and we can change the width right here. Right guys, so once you've done all of your things, you put all your edits together, etc, etc, now it's time to export your video. So to do that, just go into the export tab. On Windows it looks slightly really different to Mac, but pretty much you always want to be exporting as YouTube or MP4 because these are the most widely used formats. On Windows, you'll have AVI instead of QuickTime, but I really wouldn't mess around with either of those. You can set your timeline here, so export the editor, or you can export out of that composite shot we created. Select the export area to be the content, work, or entire timeline. The entire timeline and content are sort of self-explanatory, but the work area is, you know how he said press I and O's to set in and out points here? We can do the same thing in the editor, just like so, and now it'll only export this line here. Alright, so we can choose to export the video or the audio or both and we can choose all of our video settings here. Choose your resolution, just keep this the same because this should be what you created in your project tab. Keep the aspect ratio the same, the profile at main and I would set the level to something like 5. For 1080p video, um, a good start around is maybe 24 to 30 um, megabits per second. If you don't know what the bit rates are, then the bit rate is pretty much the quality of your video. The higher your bit rate is, the better quality video you, you'll have, but the longer it'll take to export and the bigger file size it'll have on your computer. If you have a lower bit rate, then it'll be worse quality. If you have stuff where your video isn't moving much at all, sort of like this tutorial, maybe set it a bit lower, but if you have a lot of movement, maybe set it a bit higher. Alright guys, so that pretty much wraps it up. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, um, I hope it was helpful to you, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye!